but I'm uh, really pleased to be here with you, um, particularly because JIZ is one of the key in, uh, investors in terms of uh, promoting digitalization in uh, African agriculture. So I was quite happy to come here and uh, share uh, our experience uh, with you. So what I'd like to do this morning, time is uh, fairly short, is to set the scene in terms of uh, the digitalization for agriculture. We call it D4Ag ecosystem. And you know, give you a very brief um, uh, state of the art, where are things going? And uh, end with some recommendations for governments, for um, development partners, as well as for uh, the private sector. So uh, a lot of my presentation will be derived from a recent report that City launched uh, in partnership with Dalberg Advisors uh, on the state of uh, digitalization for African agriculture. It's a very extensive study. I have the full report, and it's also online. Uh, so I hope, you know, for more details, uh, you can look into that. Uh, well, in terms of looking at the uh, infrastructure, the facilities, uh, most of the services for rural Africa will be delivered through mobile phone. So we, it's currently that's how it is, and it will continue to be that way. So according to JSMA, the data uh, shows that uh, by 2025, more than half of African populations will be subscribed to uh, uh, mobile services. And out of those, 60% will have smartphones, which means that you can develop much higher quality services, uh, you know, that are, provide better uh, access to different kinds of information than you would get uh, from a feature phone. So in terms of really reaching out uh, to uh, rural areas, uh, the mobile will continue uh, to be the main uh, 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 means uh, of getting there. There are, as you know, a lot of new technologies that are emerging, and, and many of them are being tested and applied for agriculture as well in Africa. So the big thing is, of course, all these technologies that are coming out, you know, blockchain, whether it's uh, um, drones or satellite data, Internet of Things, and so on, are allowing us to gather huge amounts of data and also the capacity to process that data. So there is a lot of interaction. You know, if you have AI systems that can really analyze and uh, process huge amounts of data in a very short time, providing real-time information at different levels uh, of the uh, users, whether it's for farmers, whether it's for uh, agribusinesses, whether it's for policymakers, you know, you can get all kinds of information, ca data coming. Uh, from the farm as well as uh, you know, weather data and all other kinds of data. So this provides real time and also gives predictive capacity. And, and really the interesting thing is all, you know, many of these emerging technologies are actually now being put in place in Africa. Although they are quite new even in the developed world, they are also being implemented. For example, if you look at blockchain, a lot of projects are taking place at uh, allow us to show transparency across the value chain. So City has been supporting many of these kind of projects. Drones, for example, we have a whole network of drone operators that we're supporting in Africa. Young entrepreneurs who are you know, providing services to farmers, uh, you know, uh, uh, surveying uh, crops and uh, farms and, and all kinds of things. So some of these technologies, also new, are actually being tested and uh, used uh, in Africa. So when you look at the, what you call the D4Ag ecosystem and its relationship in terms of broad and you know, higher level impact at the smallholder farmer level, as well as at the higher you know, kind of uh, uh, societal impact on food and nutrition security, one has to, you know, we identify two key components of this D4Ag ecosystem. So the first one is the D4Ag infrastructure, where we, we need uh, digital data, you know, in terms of uh, farmers' profiles. It could be soils data, weather information. It could be all kinds of detailed information. And to be able to analyze that and use that, you, of course, have the hardware and the software and the drones and all kinds of uh, software to analyze it. And then the second component is what we, we call use cases. 
So these are solutions that are addressing different kinds of use cases, whether there is extension and advisory services, it could be market linkages, it could be financial access, supply chain management, and macro intelligence. So in our study, we looked at the different solutions that are servicing different kinds of use cases and to see the impact of these use cases in terms of improving farm productivity, income for farmers, creating sustainability for smallholder uh, producers, especially against climate change, and also how you know, digitalization could facilitate inclusion of women and, and uh, use uh, through, throughout the value chain. So with all that, you know, if, if it really uh, effectively deployed, digitalization could be a game changer in terms of helping agricultural transformation and eventually bringing about a higher level impact. Of course, we are not saying that digitalization is a silver bullet. You will need all the other factors. I think uh, uh, the presentation before so identified some of the physical infrastructures that you need to make this possible, you know, in terms of uh, roads, in terms of storage facilities and markets and so on. Uh, so what, what, what he, uh, here, what you see that there has been an extremely rapid growth of these uh, digital solutions uh, for agriculture in Africa at a rate of about 44% a year. So since 2012, we see tremendous uh, growth and, and many, 60% oh, of the solutions have been developed in the last three years. Of course, one can raise the question of sustainability of these services. Unfortunately, many of them are donor driven. Uh, so some of, you know, Many of them may not last very long once you know the donor funding is draw, withdrawn. We also see that uh, through these solutions, 33 million farmers have been registered you know across Sub-Saharan Africa. But it doesn't mean that all of these 33 million farmers are regular users uh, of these digital services. Uh, we find that only 42 percent are actually on a regular basis using uh, these services. Okay, so in terms of investment opportunities, still very, very small uh, amount of investment in digital solutions in Africa. It's two to seven percent of what's globally uh, being invested in uh, agri-tech startups. Uh, but the potential is quite huge. We estimate that there is uh, up to 2.3 billion potential in this sector uh, for private se sector investment. So what you see here is uh, the turnover uh, in 2018 was about 127 million and still the higher amount is coming from the uh, donor funding, about 175 million. So still the private sector investment is very limited because many of the serious investors think that's still a high risk area. So that's, uh, that's something that hopefully uh, will change in the next uh, couple of years. Uh, we also see quite significant regional differences in terms of uh, who uses these technologies. The highest number of registered farmers are in East Africa, uh, and really the most developed uh, solutions are coming from East Africa. In West Africa, you see a huge number of solutions that are in the market, but the number of users are fairly limited. You also see, of course, within this, uh, you don't see it here, but there is a significant country difference. Uh, it's about 10, 12 countries actually out, out of the 45 or so that we surveyed that are regularly, uh, that, that have really well developed entrepreneurship in this area. And, and Kenya is leading the way with a lot of uh, uh, private sector companies providing these services. And we also notice that out of all this, uh, about 20 solutions provide 80% of the services for farmers. So it's about uh, 15 or 20 that have more than a million users in, in their services. So the others are fairly small. So you could see that there's quite a, a significant regional difference. Here we see the num you know, users, uh, uh, for example, how uh, the gender balance of users, women are still uh, very small part of the users, only 25% of registered farmers using the service are women. Well, part of it is uh, related to the digital divide between men and women. We know that uh, women are 15% less than men to own a mobile phone and 41% less uh, to have mobile uh, internet than men. So there is 
already a digital device and of course uh, divide and of course they have all other constraints in terms of using these services, you know, the household responsibilities and so on. Whereas we see that the use uh, make about 71% of these registered farmers. So this is not very surprising, but one has to see that uh, you know, older farmers should also be encouraged or supported to make use of these services. There is some figure, as you know, that uh, the average age of farmer is 55 to 60. Of course, uh, there have been a lot of questions around the validity of that figure. But if that figure is true, then we can see that still, you know, majority of uh, the older farmers are not making use of these services. Thanks. Here we see some of the impact figures. We don't really have a detailed uh, data on impact of the solutions, but uh, from the limited data available, you could see that uh, you know, digital solutions can provide some uh, significant impact in terms of uh, income and productivity. So uh, you could get uh, up to 73% uh, in terms of uh, productivity and up to 37% in terms of income. And what we also see is that services that put together, you know, different kinds of use cases, you know, for example, extension services combined with um, uh, market service access or combined with financial services have a much higher uh, impact. Uh, for example, about 57% on income on average and 168% on productivity. And many of these are actually moving into uh, what we call super platforms and uh, bundled services, that, that's becoming more the trend, where a lot of the services are available through uh, platforms. Next. So, um, well, again, I mean, I didn't really want to spend too much time talking about the challenges, but some of these recommendations are actually responding to the challenges that we face. So basically, uh, for governments, uh, we believe that the most significant uh, contribution that governments could make is really building the DFORAG infrastructure in terms of building farmer, you know, digital farmer profiles, digital soil maps, uh, pest and disease surveillance, and all kinds of digital information that's absolutely critical to build on these services. Uh, what you see now is a lot of projects, they try to develop their own farmer's profiles, and somebody else comes and does the same thing. These are very expensive operations, so if we had it at a national level with the government and uh, you know, support from donors, and you could have that basis to build on all kinds of services. Uh, the human capital at all levels, uh, digital uh, literacy at the farmer's level, at the policy level, the technical skills that you need to develop the services. This is one of the key constraints that many of the solution providers that we surveyed told us that this is a major constraint in terms of getting skilled people you know, to, to work in this area. So skills is very, very, very critical. And also we, we, we noticed that many of the populations in remote areas, and as you have seen also women and other disadvantaged groups, they don't have enough access to the solution. So we believe that governments can make a special effort to reach out to underserved populations. And a big issue is data stewardship and data security. Especially farmers, they feel that they don't have ownership, the data is taken and used, some people monetize the data, but it doesn't go to the farmer. So we have been doing a lot of work around that, supporting uh, farmers' organization to develop data policy so that they can benefit you know, from the data being collected. Private sector, the big challenge is uh, business model sustainability. Many of these solutions fail very quickly in a uh, couple of years because they don't have this sustainable business models. So we, we believe that they have to invest more in uh, driving uh, sustainable business models and, and in innovations. Uh, also funds for product, they should allocate more resources for product design and prototyping because sometimes they just go to the market without fully understanding what's exactly needed and how that particular need can be filled. And of course, uh, working in terms of uh, public-private partnership. And finally, for the uh, development uh, cooperation, for the German development cooperation in particular, uh, we believe that it's really important to support uh, local skills development in this area. 
uh, you know, to really develop local skills uh, and, and support, especially incubator, incubators and accelerators, hackathons, and all kinds of uh, innovative approaches that help to uh, generate a local uh, ecosystem you know, and, and support uh, in terms of providing skills. Also, the knowledge agenda, the data for our knowledge agenda is quite uh, sp sparse. You know, as I said, we need a lot more to show the impact. You know, what are the impact of these different innovations? What are the you know the needs of farmers? How can it be addressed through this innovation? So there is a lot of knowledge-related work that can be made uh, accessible to uh, to developers as well as to policy and so on. So uh, development agencies can really help in this area. Uh, and uh, also uh, donors can help in terms of data infrastructure, especially developing the uh, digital infrastructure in terms of soil maps and um, farmers' profiles and so on. And, and work in a much more coordinated way. What we see is different donors do different things. They don't really talk to each other. A lot of duplication. So one area is, you know, you can really come together and at least do some of this basic infrastructure at the national level in a much more coordinated manner. So that's all I want to share with you. And as I said, we have a big report, uh, which has a lot of details. So you are welcome. It's on our website. Uh, I also have a few copies of the summary report. Uh, so if you really are interested in the details, you know, we have all that. So thank you very much.